What's up everybody, your boy Pat, back again with another edition of Second Take, where I talk tech and I speak sports. Today's topic of the day is, did the Knicks really trade Carmelo Anthony? Now I want to get into both sides of this trade. I want to talk from the Knicks perspective and I want to talk from OKC's perspective. The Knicks, let's start there, because Melo headlines this trade, he is the guy involved that everybody wants to talk about. So the Knicks made this trade, I believe, for two reasons. One, Carmelo Anthony for the last five, six, seven, eight years, however long he's been a Nick, has absolutely gotten them to nowhere other than they have gotten without him before, prior, for the last 10 or 15 years. He hasn't gotten them to the championship. And in fact, the last three or four years, he's actually led a team, if you want to call it leading, they can't seem to get 35 wins on a year. So I think that was reason number one. Reason number two, obviously, Phil Jackson, who is no longer with the Knicks, tarnished the relationship between the Knicks front office, their owner possibly, and also Carmelo Anthony. So there were the two key factors. Melo wanted to leave, and I'll give you a little sidebar. As soon as I heard last night that he had upped the ante and said, hey, I'm not only interested in going with the Rockets for a trade, but I'm also not opposed to going to Cleveland or to OKC. Now, when he said OKC, I knew right off the bat that was the team he was going to because of the fact that the Enos Cantor contract matches up perfectly to Carmelo Anthony's contract like 99%, 95%. Obviously, they had to throw in McDermott to make it work. But also, he gives the Knicks the caveat which they were looking for, which was a contract that comes off the books next year. Now, I think Enos Cantor is a, is a nice player. He's been a sixth man, in the, a sixth man um, on the OKC's roster lately. Obviously, because they paid Steven Adams $100 million. Bad contract. But anyway, not the purpose of the video. But Enos Kanter's a solid guy. I think he can get them 20 and 8 if he starts at center for them, which I believe he will be their starting center. Um, I don't know if Joakim Noah is, is uh, going to be back. He's got shoulder issues. I think he'll probably be uh, relegated to the bench, and uh, I think the Knicks are just going to eat that contract. With that being said, Enos Kanter, nice position player down low for the Knicks. Also contract works out perfectly you like them you can keep them you don't like them you can let them go or you can sign them for a cheaper deal in hopes of signing a, a, a bigger superstar for next year's free agency Doug McDermott very nice shooter I think he'll compliment the Knicks really well I don't think he's going to be opposed to coming off the bench and then they also got a 2018 second round pick from the Chicago Bulls in the upcoming draft the Knicks have done a really nice job in stockpiling draft picks for the past year or two so their future looks bright their future looks promising they still have Chris Stapps Porzingis and they got this new kid Natilakina, whatever his name is but hopefully he's as good as people say he is and as good as advertised time will tell they also got Tim Hardaway back I actually like that pick back when they got him so the Knicks look like they are on the road to rebuilding all around Chris Stapps Porzingis and I'm curious to see him get the ball because I felt like with Melo there he really didn't get the ball didn't demand the ball so we should see if the Knicks are going to move in the right direction this year going forward. Hopefully. I mean, it's been forever. It's always been next year with the Knicks. So we'll see. I mean, that's the word of the day. Next year, Knicks. I know it's three words. It's a phrase. But I'm calling it the word of the day. Next year, Knicks. That's been their mantra for the past 25 years. I don't even know how long. The OKC side of the trade. Obviously, you made a trade for um, Paul George in which you raped the Indiana Pacers. But you also now have Melo, and you also got Westbrook. Obviously, he's still there. I don't think Westbrook is going to average a triple-double. I'm just going to go out on a limb. You got Melo. You got Paul George. I'm curious to see who plays the three, who plays the four, or who plays the two and who plays the three between those two guys. I'm also curious to see how the offense runs now that you got Melo, who's a ball stopper and literally likes to isolate I don't know how that will work. We shall see, especially 
with Russell Westbrook there who likes to dominate the ball. I don't even know if Paul George takes a back seat. It is going to be very interesting. All I want to say is they have three, I don't know, top 25 players, you could call them. I mean, yeah, you could say top 50, definitely. I don't know. A lot of people think Melo has fallen off, so we shall see. But as of right now, the Knicks and the Oklahoma City Thunder have made a trade, and that trade has gone down. How will this work out for both teams? We shall see, man. The Oklahoma City Thunder last year were in the playoffs. I think they finished with the sixth seed, and they obviously got better. They added some superstar power into their lineup. So we shall see how this works out for them. And the Knicks, they look like they finally have decided which direction they want to go. And hopefully it's for the better and for the good of the team and the franchise because they have struggled with identity and winning as a whole in past years. It's your boy, Pat. Please subscribe, like this video, dislike it. Peace. I'll catch you in the next one.